Greetings, Mars here, and welcome to episode 34 of my modded Factorio playthrough. Uh, in this episode, we're going to try to deal with our iron shortage by expanding the base and finding some more ore. Enjoy. Iron production isn't really getting any better, and it won't. Below 40% on sapphire, and the problem is, is as this all gets mined out, it's just going to be less and less and less. So I don't even think we're going to have enough resources in order to even upgrade this. I think it's going to run out before we get to that point. Because look how uh, meager that is. So we need to expand Sapphire. Well, the quick way is to either find more Sapphire or find more Jivalite. And there is some of both floating around here. There's a Jivalite patch right here. And there's one over there. But we've also got some Sapphire. There's a 10 million Sapphire right there. And a 2 million right here. Um, that one's very large. But getting the wall over there... Oh, there's one right here too. 1.3 million. Uh, getting the wall over there might be kind of difficult. Like, what I'm thinking of is just what's the easiest... <laughs> the easiest source we can get right now. Uh, it's probably this one. This Sapphire. And I think Adamantite could be turned into mostly iron too. So I'm thinking it's like... We could build this wall down here. And then over here. In doing that, we would block this off, and there's some biters to kill. But we would uh, get access to this. Another thing to consider is that when we're mining, we're going to create a ton of pollution. It's not as much of a problem when you've got a relatively compa compact base like this, because the pollution just doesn't go out that far. But when you have mining bases that are out in the middle of nowhere, the pollution really can spread. So, besides just expanding the wall, we're probably going to want to put some turrets on there and some ammunition and all of that as well. Luckily, we've got some of that stuff left over. Got some walls left over, some ammo left over, and I've got some turrets. But man, even those turrets require iron, which is problematic. Let's make a blueprint here. Turrets. So you want to have them spaced at least one space away from the wall so the biters can't reach them. And then we want it at maximum distance. You can kind of use the uh, map here to see exactly what that maximum distance is. Okay, so that is one step too far because it's not quite covering the walls. About right here, it is. So we need a belt for the ammo. Inserter to put it in. There we go. Actually, that looks completely spaced out evenly. And then some lights would be mighty convenient. Okay. That looks pretty good. Let's make a blueprint. I kind of want to make one to keep this time. Let's make a wall with some gut turrets. And there we go. Let's start it right here. And if we need more turrets, we could uh, come back and change the design to have these closer together. If the biter waves are too strong, or they're, uh, they get through this. So it's kind of an empty spot right here. So if spitters want to hide there, they probably could, but we'll see how that works. So a belt can come in through the bus to supply ammo here, but for now... I will just... create a chest. And put a loader. And we can put all the copper ammo, since that's the the cheaper stuff to make right now. I believe each one fills up with 10, yes. Then we can just keep copying the design like this.
Okay, now that we've made it down here, we can extend the wall. Probably should just go out there, kill some biters, put the wall somewhere, move it back down this way. Luckily, it's daytime. This process is made a little easier with the armor-piercing rounds. And we'll probably have to fight some of those guys as well. Let's see, unfortunately building a wall is going to be kind of annoying. Because of all this water. I really want landfill. So I'm going to research it. I think it'll research pretty quick because we've been building up science packs. Yeah. Oh, looks like iron was just about to catch up. Well, I want straight <laughs> straight walls, so let's make some landfill. Alright, so here's our sapphire. You can see it is pretty large. Two million, and then we have the infinite sapphire in the center, which we need sulfuric acid for. And that's a good way to dump sulfuric acid if you've got a lot of extra. So as far as making the wall, it'd probably be... Makes sense to, like, uh, go in right here. Tiny little uh, ash zone. We can't walk through here, so actually doing it right here ought to be good. Something like this. Okay, we have landfill. So this is the version that uses stone as opposed to mud. So it's a little expensive, but I don't really care. I just want a tiny bit of landfill so we can make our walls straight. Okay. The wall is completed, but uh, ammo is short, because wall sections like this take a ton of ammo, even if it's only a half a belt's worth. So we need to make some more and uh, pipe it in here. I had to kill some more biters' nests, so I'm afraid of running out of ammo if we don't pipe it in. So we still need to manufacture it. So we'll find somewhere to make some ammo and bring it down here and go down the, the wall. We have a few different choices on ammo here. Ideally, of course, we'd be making uh, piercing rounds. And there's three different ways of doing it. The previous way we were doing it used nickel, which is a byproduct which we need to use up. That's fairly efficient. Then you can make them out of uh, copper magazines or regular firearms magazines. But the problem is, is each of these recipes requires steel. And we're really short on iron right now. So probably the most ideal way of doing it, at least for the wall, is just to make copper magazines. They consume a ton of copper, but that would actually produce slightly more iron because we'd be using uh, stereotype for that. And then our own personal ammo, we can make piercing round magazines, which we can make out of all available nickel. And then we can make the firearms magazine from lead and copper uh, like we were previously. Let's just create another line here just to see. So one machine making piercing rounds. Then we need to make the regular ones. So we need a uh, point four machines there. Well, while we're here. Let's make some copper magazines. That will consume all of the factory's copper. Hmm, where to place it? Well, we did have this empty space right here between belts and inserters. It might be a good place to make some ammo. So we need a fast going out, and it looks like two going in, so let's make that a stack going in. We can pick up resources from that. And this one can be stored simply in a box. 
I'll leave it unlimited in size. And now we need to get this ammo to the wall. For now, I'm just going to do a really long belt. It's going to add even more resources to the process, but whatever. Don't really have trains or anything right now, so we're just going to have to deal with this. I think I'm going to use uh, this line down here to bring these copper magazines over. Put it on the same side of the belt as the rest of the ammo. And our wall is now fueled. Though we should probably put some radars on here just to uh, get an idea of what's out there. I'm thinking at this point we probably want to have radars along the entire wall so we can check for damage and whatnot. our separate patch. Let's clear it up. Okay, I wonder if Yarm works on the uh, infinite sapphire. So let's check regular sapphire. There it appears. Two million, much more than everything else. But does it work on the infinite? It does. Interesting. Well, we're not going to mine infinite Sapphire for now, so I'll remove that. But it's interesting how it does kind of show up on the, the list here. Okay, how are we getting this over here? Well, long belt. <laughs> um, I don't really want to move too much stuff, so I'll probably just bring it in on this same belt here. So come here, and then down, 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 down. Oof, that's a long belt. And then swing over here. And I won't scan this or anything just because we have 2 million sapphire and we don't even need to use Prospector for that right now. So might as well leave it like it is. How much ore is this all going to produce? Probably quite a bit. So we should probably make as many fast belts as we can get away with here. Oops. Didn't connect to the copper right here. Unfortunately, this guy is kind of stealing it all. Well, but it still seems to be going. Going well enough, anyway. Seems to be running okay, except for the infinite miners, which makes sense, but look at that. Lots and lots of sap, right? Hmm. We're in the position now where the stereotype isn't going at full speed either. But I think that's because of belts. Mining setup is complete here. Lots of drills aren't running because they don't have any sulfuric acid. We'll solve that later. We have a nice long belt. Use some landfill to make it straight. Except there where I did undergrounds. So now we need to go up here and come in here. But we should probably expand this a little bit. Because even once we get the sap right there, we're still only going to be able to produce ore at the standard, uh, I think it was six items per second or whatever that setup was meant for. But that's really not enough. So we need to scale it up a bit. We can use this. Because now we have ore sorting facility number two. And ore crusher number two. 
since at the moment we are running Sapphirite and Steratite at the same time, I'm going to make a new recipe here for a crushed Steratite. We have four of them. We need to crush it in a crusher. And it comes from a stereotype mine. Okay, so now we're up to 12 if we run everything at full speed. I'm thinking this will be okay for now. Because when we research better ways of doing ingots, we'll be able to increase our yield further. And then even further from that, we'll be able to do it, increase the yield with alloys from like silicon. Which, uh, we are collecting quite a bit, so we need to get rid of that. Also, the nickel has backed up, because we're not using it up to make armor-piercing magazines right now. We're kind of low on copper, believe it or not. So we need to kind of upgrade stuff a little bit here. But the reason why I was doing that math is because I was thinking, do we need to upgrade or change this setup? Um, but I think it will work as is. However, we're going to need lots of steel to make this happen. 60 steel plates. Wow. That's going to take a while. Maybe not upgrade them right now. <laughs> Let's wait for the resources to build back up. Okay, we're just about there. Not a moment too soon. 15% of sapphire left. It's been kind of a slog because we've just been running out of iron here, but hopefully... This will solve the problem and give us time to upgrade our production. So as far as this other belt goes... Let's divert it. And we can do an input priority. This side... Anything we're mining in the close mine will be prioritized over the mine that's far away. Now we're finally producing a solid belt again. But we need to make more ingots, and that should have automatically upgraded here. I don't think we upgraded to the next version of Blast Furnace yet. Uh, we can. Uh, since we're here, might as well. Probably won't take very long. And that upgrades the casting machines as well. So it's 50% faster. Those are upgraded. So we might as well upgrade everything else. Alright, that's it for this episode. On the next one, we're going to work on expanding our smelting operation to make more iron, in addition to making iron from silicon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.